Isn't it great to be pleasantly surprised and terrified sometimes? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 horror movies that were way better than we expected. For this list, we're taking a look at horror movies that struggled to steal the limelight in pre-release, be it due to their underwhelming, low-budget look or unconvincing plot, but ultimately gripped audiences when they hit cinemas or DVD and streaming services years later. Number 20. The Invisible Man An unhinged guy stalks and terrorizes his ex. Simple. <laughs> Well, except for the fact that he's invisible. So it's kind of like a classic slasher setup minus the colorful, flamboyant, visible villain. Sheesh. Based on a 19th century H.G. Wells book, some may have been a little dubious about this old-school style horror, which by today's standards has a pretty vanilla plot. But its excruciating tension and superb emotional performance by Elizabeth Moss blew people away. They can prove what I'm experiencing. They can prove that Adrian is stalking me. It was hugely popular with movie fans during its limited cinema release, grossing $129 million worldwide against a measly $7 million budget. Number 19, Final Destination 5. How many Final Destinations can there really be? Similar to franchises like Saw, Scream, and A Nightmare on Elm Street, the Final Destination series has totted up quite a few additions in its catalog. But surely by this fifth film, its over-the-top, convoluted, gory kills wear a little thin? Well, surprisingly, no. Its opening bridge sequence delivers on big, thrilling drama, and the intricacies of death's kills throughout never fail to disappoint. <laughs> The fifth movie also continued the series' trend of being watchable in 3D, further enhancing its in-your-face, blink-and-you'll-miss-it violence. I just… I don't want to miss anything. Number 18. Mandy In this movie, Nicolas Cage goes up against a crazed cult. And no, it's not the Wicker Man. Instead, Mandy sees Cage play Red Miller, a lumberjack whose wife is kidnapped by a demonic, cult-following biker gang, and Red stops at nothing to save her. <laughs> A movie where Cage passionately screams down a camera lens can be easily dismissed as just another Nick Cage meltdown showcase, but its devilish characters, LSD-infused visuals, and over-the-top violence allows Cage to really explore his wild side in all the right ways. Showing us his huge range of emotions, and of course some of that trademark Cage-ness, Mandy is an awesome horror thriller with just the right amount of ridiculousness. Number 17. Orphan There's something unnerving about creepy kids in horror movies, especially when they're seemingly cute and cuddly on the outside. Hey, if you're so bored, then why aren't you down at the party? I've never really seen the point of it. Nobody's ever talked to me before. I guess I'm different. Of course, creepy kids is not a new concept. It's been done to death in the horror genre. But 2009's The Orphan throws a spanner in the works, with a twist laid on that you definitely won't see coming. We don't want to give too much away, but let's just say that it will probably make you fear the name Esther forever. If I find out that you're lying, I'll cut your hairless little prick off before you even figure out what it's for. And the young Isabel Furman who plays Esther in this movie is the real hero here, with her chilling performance, that's frankly way beyond her years, compared to that of Linda Blair's in The Exorcist. That's high praise. Number 16, Ready or Not. Proof that there's still hope for the spooky mansion setting, Ready or Not makes us fear marriage and the idea of having in-laws with horrifying and hilarious precision. Well, if she dies, does this count? Of course, it does not count. It must be the bride. It's essentially a big old game of cat and mouse, with newlywed Grace being told that she has to survive a night of being hunted by her husband's family in order to properly be initiated. Hey, Stevens, look behind you! It's violent, surprisingly funny in places, and leaves its hooks in you from start to finish. It also carries a smartly crafted critique on social class. It may be littered with horror cliches, but it reminds us why so many of them are so effective. I can't let my entire family die because of you. It's insane. Can't you see it's insane? Number 15, Scream 4. 
Some horror movies bank solely on the genre's well-worn cliches while adding nothing of their own. What did you do with Marnie? She's on the cutting room floor. That's not funny. This isn't a comedy. It's a horror film. People live, people die. However, 1996's Scream presented us a treasure trove of old-school slasher tropes laced with postmodern commentary. But after a few of its sequels didn't quite measure up, Scream 4 arguably represented a return to form for Ghostface. The movie still relies heavily on a meta format of typical horror setups, but it does so in a more self-aware way. This has never been about killing you. It's about becoming you. Instead of merely going through the motions, Wes Craven shows more of an awareness for the franchise's potential staleness, mixing things up with some interesting kills and plot twists. Number 14. The Autopsy of Jane Doe Some things you can't unsee. Featuring the inspired pairing of Emile Hirsch and Brian Cox, who star as father and son coroners, The Autopsy of Jane Doe is another great example of adept writing making the most out of a claustrophobic setting. Given the task of carrying out an autopsy on a mysterious woman, sinister happenings start to reveal her horrific backstory. Those things we found inside, those were impossible. Whatever the hell happened in here, we are way past possible. The movie ultimately takes us somewhere completely far-fetched, but the perfectly paced way we get there, with subtle moments of silence and rising tension, as well as some awesome performances, make this a must-see for fans of the horror thriller genre. Ah! Ah! Number 13, Session 9. If you prefer your horrors with less gore and more psychologically exhausting uncertainty, then look no further. Although by today's standards it appears pretty low budget and cheesy, at least at the beginning, this story of a group of asbestos removal workers who enter an asylum is anything but. Very good. All right, let's go back to work. Come on. The fact that this movie was shot in a real asylum certainly comes across in its authentic atmosphere, which alongside its unsettling soundtrack creates something that will stay with you long after the movie has finished. In essence, it's a classic haunted house setup, but it serves up one of the most immersive, uncomfortable, and intelligent movie experiences. He's hurt, and he said you did it to him. Is that true? Gordy? Gordy! <laughs> Number 12, Zombieland Double Tap. God, this is really terrifying, but totally unrealistic. The first Zombieland was unique in the fact that its highly stylized nature made us all kind of wish we were in a zombie apocalypse. Kind of. So bringing out a sequel was a tall order. But they nailed it. Zombieland Double Tap gives us tons of hilariously gory fight scenes and cutaways, with some of the action sequences, particularly the RV scene, being comparable to household zombie flicks like Dawn of the Dead. Right on time, Columbus. Its main quartet remains the biggest draw, though, with their comedic chemistry managing to make the end of the world seem pretty cool for the most part. Number 11, The Crazies. Another zombie-esque flick, this 2010 movie retreads the footsteps of the 1973 movie by the same name. And although it could have easily fallen into the predictable undead formula we've seen time and time again, The Crazies manages to offer a compelling story that takes itself just seriously enough. Focusing on a military virus that infects the inhabitants of an Iowa town, neighbors and locals start acting increasingly strange, then increasingly violent. At times, it's tense and exhilarating, and at others, it's deeply upsetting and unapologetic. But all in all, it's definitely one of the better zombie movies out there that substitutes mass hordes of the undead for intricate storytelling. Number 10, The Descent. Upon hearing the premise of a group of women discovering a nest of monsters while caving, one might be quick to label the British maid The Descent as just another cheap jump scare flick. You can get dehydration, disorientation, yeah, yeah, yeah. claustrophobia, yeah, blah, blah, panic blah. attacks. True, The Descent has jump scares in spades, but it also has the directorial depth to go with it. Praised for its intense, claustrophobic atmosphere, it's unbearably intense in parts, and boasts a host of bulletproof performances. Hello! 
plus for added kudos, it also features a pretty shocking twist towards the end. The Descent just goes to show that impressive direction and acting can reign supreme over complicated story. I'd say that you sound to hunt with, like a bat. And they've evolved perfectly to live down here in the dark. Number 9. Paranormal Activity <laughs> The sheer amount of found footage movies out there has kind of sullied the genre's effectiveness. So when this ghostly, home-based found footage horror was gearing up for release, most of us were likely thinking the same thing. Why? Well, paranormal activity captured audiences everywhere. Its ruthless suspense and deafening silence reminded us just how terrifyingly realistic, relatable, and plausible horror can be. Although on paper its formula isn't anything new, its minimal approach still leaves viewers staring agape at the screen, terrified of the littlest things, like shadows, temperamental light switches, and creaking doors. Number 8. Hush A deaf woman in a house in the woods being hunted by a guy with a crossbow. That's all Hush is, but boy does it do a hell of a lot with what it's got. I can come in anytime I want. I can get you anytime I want, but I'm not going to, not until it's time when you wish you're dead." Delivering a slightly different twist on the typical home invasion horror we're used to seeing, Hush is a brilliant, suspense-filled hour and a half that will have you sat perfectly still while watching in fear of making any noise. The thrill of the hunt and the eeriness of its white, masked villain make Hush a chaotic yet calculated slasher. I bet if I hit the right spot, I can make you scream. Number 7. It Follows Offering a similar supernatural Who's Next vibe to A Nightmare on Elm Street, It Follows certainly offers a unique take on the villain aspect of horror. In this movie, an elusive, shape-shifting, demon-like presence, which is passed on via sex, hunts people down and kills them. Hello? Hello? and the only way to escape it is to just keep passing it on to others. Highly metaphorical, obviously, this movie manages to avoid the cliché teen horror framework and instead give us something totally distinctive. Everything's okay. It still has some excellent jump scares and weird, disturbing characters, but its clever plot shines brighter than both those things, and will have you cynically staring and slow-walking strangers in the street. Number 6. The Babadook This movie poses the question, what if the monster in your closet was real? And no, we're not talking about the furry and friendly Monsters Inc. kind. Far from it. The Babadook follows the tumultuous relationship between a mother and son, which gets increasingly more difficult when a mysterious pop-up book appears in their house, the book's titular character being the dreaded Babadook. The resulting pursuit of this creepy character is one of the most terrifying things you'll ever see. Instead of giving us erratic jump scares, the Babadook gives us about a million little ones, all subtle but poignant enough to leave you constantly on edge. Number 5. The Conjuring Yep. So, what are you guys? I mean, what do people call you? Uh, well, we've been called demonologists. It's one name for us. Ghost hunters, paranormal researchers. Kooks. From subtle to not so subtle, next we take a look at director James Wan's hugely successful The Conjuring. As we've already seen on this list, possession stories aren't new news, but somehow the loud jump scares of The Conjuring mixed with its compelling story of married paranormal team Ed and Lorraine Warren make it engaging in all the right ways. In parts, it's predictably unpredictable, but thanks to its solid cast and eerie aesthetic, it manages to take well-worn themes and deliver something that will have you literally jumping out of your seat. Number 4. Wes Craven's New Nightmare It's off. Funny, it's warm. Just like a real hand. When it was announced that the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise was going to get a seventh addition to its lineup, there was a collective sigh in the cinema world. I touched him. But what fans didn't expect was a completely new direction, which sees Freddy Krueger step into the real world to terrorize Nancy actor Heather Langenkamp. Now that the films have ended, the 
martinis out of the bottle. Meta as heck, and by far the most original plotline since the first movie, Wes Craven's new nightmare features tons of familiar faces and horrific dreamlike sequences, but in ways you've never seen before. There was no movie. There was only her life. Number three, The Cabin in the Woods. The aforementioned Scream was long the go-to horror movie for poking fun at the genres of recycled banality. But then, The Cabin in the Woods came along and took every horror trope you can think of, blended them up together, and yet still managed to offer up an original story. Do not read the Latin. In fact, its convincing horror themes and meta humor is so on point, you're unsure when it's being genuinely scary and when it's being ironic. And it's that guessing game that makes the movie so enjoyable to watch. Plus, it's downright hilarious and features Chris Hemsworth, Sigourney Weaver, and Bradley Whitford, which is just gravy. Oh, come on. <laughs> Number two, get out. Making the leap from comedy to horror can be tough but not for writer and director Jordan Peele, it would seem. In 2017, he blew everyone away with Get Out, a surprising hit horror about social class and racism. Black is in fashion. Those themes are strong by themselves, but the movie's genius plotline and fleshed out characters allow Peele to have fun with a whole host of cliches and a heady bit of humor too. I don't know if you know this, white people love making people sex slaves and shit. If you're the type of person who'll only watch a horror if it's going to offer you something new, then look no further. And who knows? Maybe one day you'll enjoy being members of the family. Before we unveil our most unlikely terrifying number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Underwater, The Abyss gets a 21st century remake, sort of, starring Kristen Stewart. How was that? Rubber. Who would have thought a story about a killer tire could even get made, let alone be any good? Last shift. Rookie cops don't worry. This ain't a typical day on the job, we hope. <laughs> Dawn of the Dead, a worthy retelling of George A. Romero's zombie classic. You're not getting a gun. Trust. Primary ingredient in any relationship. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Evil Dead Some films should never be remade. However, a remake of Evil Dead did happen in 2013. Mia OD's? She didn't just OD. Legally, your sister died. Director Fede Alvarez is known for his smart, twisting storytelling, like 2016's Don't Breathe, and he created an all-out gore fest with his Evil Dead remake. Fans loved it. With a host of new, modern effects, the visuals and realism in this installment are turned up to 11. You are all going to die tonight. It may not have the originality of the 1981 movie, but it certainly doesn't skimp on shocking content, which was what the original was all about. He's not gonna let you leave. And he's not gonna stop when he has you. And it's even got the seal of approval from Bruce Campbell's Ash in the form of a post credits cameo. Groovy. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.